In this example, we're going to use Microsoft Excel to construct a confidence interval of the population proportion at the given level of confidence. And here we have this one at 90%, and these are the answers. Let's see how we can do that. I've created this Excel document. It's pretty in-depth. It covers a lot of stuff. It probably is faster to use StatCrunch, and if you can, I probably would suggest using that. But once this document is created, just by entering information, all this will be automatically calculated for you. All right, so let's first go over this table here because we need this uh, confidence interval table if we're going to create the confidence interval. And they have these critical values. Now we have a 90% confidence interval that we want to create. And what that means is by looking at this picture here, we want to find an interval that's 90% confident that's this shaded area here. Well, that means that 5% is in the right tail and 5% is in the left tail. So that's what this 0 0.05 means. 5% is in each tail. And that critical value, that Z value, is going to be the positive Z value here and the negative Z value here. So it would be the same number, same absolute value, basically, on each side. So if we find the 95% uh, for Z value here, that will cover all of this information, this Z value will be the number we use for the critical value. So we have to find that Z value. So we go to the book and we look in the back of the book or we use StatCrunch normal calculator and we find where you can get a 95% where the area is to the left. That comes out to be 1.645. This table is given in the book so I just use that. But that's kind of the process of getting a 90% confidence interval and finding that critical value. All right, now that we have that, We'll put the information in here. We have 125 and 250. So I have that input. And then the p hat is just going to be the input of x divided by the number that we have, 0.5. And sometimes we're given p hat already. So that's why this box over here is where we're going to be entering our p hat. So after calculated, this is the one thing we have to enter also. So you enter X and N, and then this one. This will all automatically be calculated for you. So don't change that. Then we need, in order to get the bounds, we need to compute the standard deviation, okay? Because this is going to be the upper and lower bound formula. For the upper bound, P hat, plus that critical value times the standard deviation. So let's do that here. Standard deviation is just equal to the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat. So I've got to put another parenthesis in order to use the numerator, and it will be p hat times 1 minus p hat, and the parenthesis for the 1 minus p hat, and the parenthesis for the numerator, divided by the n, and then n the parenthesis for the whole thing. Okay, so that's the, that's the standard deviation. Now we're able to make our upper and lower bounds here p hat plus the critical value times that standard deviation for the upper bound equals p hat, again over here, plus we want a 90% confidence, we need the 1.645, and then times the standard deviation. And then for the lower bound, it's the same thing, basically, except you subtract the latter portion, p hat, and then minus that times standard deviation. And then that gives us our confidence interval 0 0.552, 0 0.448. I have it rounding off. So let's check that to make sure we're right. 0.448, make sure you put them in the right order, right? Upper bound goes second, lower bound first because it's an interval. Okay, so the first one and second one. And I did go through that and I kind of ignored some things, right? Because for this to be true, this has to be greater than 10 and then it has to be less than the small n has to be less than this. So we can quickly create this thing over here. That's just going to be equal to the n times our p hat, which is over here again, times 1 minus p hat, and then we hit enter. Looks like I may have made a small mistake here. If we look at this, I probably need a multiplication there. And we can see that that's greater than or equal to 10. And then with our value here, 
it's telling us that we're supposed to construct this, so we say that this is true. All right, then now I'm going to fill the rest of these in. It's just basically the 95% will use this value in place of the critical number, same basic formula, and the 99 will use this. So I'll pause it and fill the rest of that in. And then if we needed our margin of error, sometimes there's some questions in the book about margin of error. That's just this uh, formula here. Basically, it's the part that you're adding or subtracting from the p hat. So that's just the critical value times the standard deviation. So we can do that. This equals the critical value for 90% times the standard deviation. Margin of error for that one, same thing. And for the 99%, equals the critical value times standard deviation. So basically what that is, is that's, if you look for the middle value of these two, and then you have that plus or minus on either side of that, 0.52, see? So 0.5 was the middle, 0.52 and 0.52, or excuse me, 0 0.052, 0 0.052. So maybe we'll format those so that there are two decimal places, three decimal places, there we go. Okay, so so far we have all of this just by entering the x and the n and this p hat, all this information is now automatically calculated here. You'll also come across some problems where you need to find a sample size. So for example, a researcher wishes to estimate the proportion of adults who have high-speed internet access, what size sample should be obtained if they want to be within 0 0.05 with a 90% confidence. And then she uses a previous estimate of 0.28. So she uses a previous estimate of that. So we go into here, that's our p hat. The 0.28 is the previous estimate. And then we're going to use this information over here. And I'm going to enter my error. The error was 0 0.05. And then this is the formula right here for finding the size needed for estimating a population proportion. And this is when you're given the p hat, like we were given. If p hat's not available, then you use this formula down here and you enter it in this one, and we'll create that later. But now we just enter this information in, and once we do it, we have it for all confidence intervals here. So for the 90%, it's going to be p hat times 1 minus p hat times the critical value for 90% confidence interval over here divided by the error and the error we're entering right there and then squared. Now the problem with this number is look it's 218.21 and the answer is 219. We need to round up because you can't have like a half a person or a point of a person. So you can always look at this number and round up if you'd like, but Excel has a nice function in here called round up. So I go and click in front there and I write round up, parenthesis open. And that gives me the number I want to round up. Yep. And then comma how many digits. We just want zero digits. We just want a whole number. Hit enter. So it will round up all the time. Now we just do that for the 95% and 99% and it will give us the correct answers for both of those as well in case we're given those options. I'll fill those in. Okay, so those are the numbers you needed for a 95% confidence interval, 310, and 99% you need 535. Okay, let's look at another example. I just reloaded this problem and we're going to look at if it doesn't uh, have any prior estimates. So we have some new values, so now I'm going to show that we just insert them. 0 0.02 is our error. It updates there. We're looking for 99% confidence this time and prior estimate of 0.32. Okay, 99% since I have it done, 36.08, done, answer. And now if there's no prior estimate, that's what we want. So we got to go to our no prior estimate formula and fill that in. So we got the error, same thing. And now we use the formula 0.25 times parenthesis 
the, the 90% confidence interval divided by the error squared. And again, we're going to use a round up. So I'm going to put the round up in front of this, comma zero digits, and then hit enter. And then I'm going to quickly just basically put my dollar signs in here so I can, the dollar sign on the J10. And then as I pull down, the 95% will go down one, and then the 99 will go down there. The only thing I need to be pointing at is this box here, and because the P hat is, is going to be the 0.25, okay? Or that's what it comes out to. P hat's actually 0.5, but that multiplication here comes out to be 0.25, okay? So I just drag that down. That gives me the rest of them. And what I wanted was 4145 because we wanted a 99% confidence interval. And that's what I have here for my 99% confidence interval. So that's how you find the number uh, that you will need based on what error you want and what confidence interval you also want. So this Excel document is ready basically to just um, solve any of the sample sizes you need or any kind of confidence interval bounds that you need over here as well.